Okay, I'm going to try and show you uh, how we can use this uh, time domain reflectometer to try and fix my workshop speakers. Uh, I have this pair of Wharfdale Active Diamonds which have a uh, usual phono connecting cable on the way in, but one channel is intermittent. Somewhere in the cable there's a break and I've replaced the connectors and checked both ends and can't figure out why it is, uh, where the break is. So I thought let's get the big guns out and rather than just replacing the cable let's try and find out where the break is properly. Uh, now this is my Tektronix CSA 803A uh, communication signal analyzer which has in it a um, time domain reflectometer plug-in, the SD24 here. And what that does is send out a very rapid pulse from these two sockets uh, which can travel along the cable that you want to test and then it will measure the response from that. Um, and this pulse is extremely fast, it has a rise time of about 18 picoseconds, something like that, so it will quite happily um, observe defects in cables of millimetres in size. At the moment it's just switched on and you can see the pulse on the screen here, it goes up uh, along the top and down a bit. The reason for that is that there's a short circuit plug on here. Uh, so this transmission line here is short circuited so the pulse is reflected back and cancels out the original one. And the width of the pulse you can see on the screen there is actually the distance between the pulse generator inside here and this um, socket on the front here. So fine is the resolution of this instrument. So it should be good enough for fixing a speaker. So I'm going to now connect up a, our test cable. If I take off this shorting plug, you can see it wobbles about a bit as it comes undone. Now you can see it's open circuit and you can see the initial pulse and then the reflection is positive this time. Bonk goes up to twice the height. So I'm going to plug in a little test rig. Uh, start with a bit of cable here. Plug that on. You can see immediately that the pulse takes longer to come back. Uh, there's the original one and the reflection is now some distance across the screen and in fact this uh, has cursor measurements. If I uh, press the cursor button up here on this horrible old touch screen and I set the left hand cursor to the start of the pulse, it might be a bit hard to see because they're just tiny red dots, and the right hand cursor I set to the reflection there. Now it will measure uh, the distance along the cable by working out the time that it takes the pulse to come back. So here, for example, um, the, it measures the distance as 243 millimetres, which is about right. This is a, I think it's a 200 millimetre cable, and there's a plus a bit of distance inside there. Obviously, the distance measurement isn't perfect because it depends on the speed of propagation in the cable, which it just has an estimate for, uh, and I haven't bothered to set it up accurately. But so that tells us how long that cable is. Um, now we should be able to use that to tell how long the, um, the speaker cable is. So I have a horrible adapter here cobbled together from bits and pieces found lying around the lab which has an SMA connector on this end, goes through a BNC adapter to a phono connector and a back-to-back -back connector so we can connect our um, test cables to it. Uh, it'll probably have a horrible impedance mismatch but it's good enough for, for fixing speakers. So I'll screw this on like that. You can see immediately the waveform changes. The reflection is not so neat and tidy now because there's lots of odd reflections from mismatches in this very imperfect bit of transmission line here. But again, you can see that the cable's got longer by about, I don't know, 100 millimetres. So let's move the cursor and have a look. Uh, so the reflection is broadly speaking about here. There we go. About, I'll put the red dot there. Um, actually, if I press this, you might be able to see it better. If I put them in vertical bars like that. Ooh. Uh, let's try that. Uh, oops, cursors, let's try them. There we go, that's much easier to see now. So there we go, let's put the cursors on the initial pulse and the reflection. That now says about 350 millimetres. So it's measured the additional 100 millimetre length of there correctly. Now as far as I'm aware, the right-hand channel on these speakers works okay. So I plug the right-hand connector in, we should see... Womp! Now you see that goes flat because now the pulse is travelling further along the wire, all the way down to the speaker and back. In fact, it's off the right-hand side of the screen. We can't see where it's going. But what we can do uh, is measure the characteristic impedance of the cable, which is, uh, if I put the cursor back to dots, it will tell us uh, more useful things. So if I take cursor to, see, on the first part of the um, trace here, where it's this coax here, the characteristic impedance is 50 ohms basically, plus or minus a bit of noise, which is what it should be. 
If I move along to over here, onto the grotty cable that goes to the speaker, that has a characteristic impedance of about 34 ohms, should you care about such things. Obviously at audio frequencies it doesn't matter, but um, uh, the, the machine can measure it for us anyway. Uh, now we need to zoom out a bit so that we can see the whole cable. So if I press that and zoom out a bit, a bit further. oh there we go, now we can see the whole thing. You can see the initial pulse, in fact can we do that a bit closer in? No, not really. There we go. So you can see the initial pulse and uh, you can see the end of the cable. And in fact we should be able to get an idea of how long the cable is if I go to back to vertical bar so that you can see it. This thing has the world's worst touch screen. It dates from about 1989 or thereabouts, so it's not exactly the latest technology. Um, so if I put the cursor along to what looks like the end of the cable there, see suddenly the reflection goes off uh, positive a long way. The reason it's not very sharp is because this cable's lossy and it's mismatched, uh, and so you don't get a, a very clear reflection, but we can still see where the end is. Now, the measurement here to the end of the cursor says 2.57 meters, which is about right for the length of this cable. So that gives us an idea of where any fault in the cable might be. So this cable I can waggle it about as much as I like and the trace stays absolutely stable, no problem at all. You can see a slight variation when I waggle it, but uh, there's obviously no serious faults there. So if I unplug that one and plug in the left-hand channel, which is the dodgy one, see immediately the trace is different. Uh, it's fast, it's for start it's moving around and uh, it's, uh, yeah, wiggling up and down somewhat. But the wiggle seems to start at a point about here. So let's try zooming in. So I think the brake is somewhere fairly near the connector. There we go. So let's put that over that side. And move our cursors into position. So if we wiggle this, where does the wiggle occur? It's quite near the end, isn't it? So the wiggle seems to start about here, I would say. Maybe there. It's quite close to the end. If I can wiggle that, can I fix it? No, it's very, very intermittent. Wiggle it. Oh, look, now it's very sensitive just there. So I work my hands along the cable trying to tr stimulate the fault. So there. So according to the cursors, it should be at a distance of about 900 millimeters. So it's actually a bit further along than I thought. Um, so we can see where the fault is, but it's kind of, it's not very permanent. If I pull the cable, will that help to stimulate it into being permanent? No. In fact, if I pull it, it gets better. That's really strange. A very odd fault. Uh, it's not really a full break, and neither is it a short circuit. So, this is a bit inconclusive actually, less, less helpful than I was hoping for. We can tell there's a fault, but the best estimate of where it is, is somewhere between the start, you know, here's our adapter, and there's the, about 400 millimeters to there, and the brake appears to be somewhere before 900 millimeters. So I suspect the best thing to do is just to hack, end, hack this end of the cable off and shorten it about that much. But at least we know that the fault is not further down close to the speaker. Um, so yeah, I think it's probably about that much cable that's going to be faulty. So that's how much I will try shortening it. That'll do for now.